Good day YouTube, Shizna Gaming here. Today I'm going to bring to you a simple docking tutorial. Now I'm going to be uploading this to YouTube, but I'm also going to be putting this on a Facebook page of Boat Kerbal Space Program for anyone who really is uh, new to docking because I understand how frustrating it can be docking. I mean, it's it's not easy. Um, I'm, I'm just going to be straightforward. No sugarcoating. It's difficult, especially when you're new at it. I mean, there's so many things that can go wrong. But anyway, right, we're going to uh, actually be docking with a station. I Ooh, hello. We're going to be docking with a station I have in orbit. Now, the uh, station is coming along quite nicely. I enjoy it. Uh, I'm getting a bit of a lag here because I've got my frame rate capped at 32. I'm going to fly this uh, space field juggernaut. Now, I'm not sure why it keeps names every time I lock something new onto here, but you can see I've got a nice station going, right? Beautiful old station. You can see the construction of it in a uh, couple of other videos. But uh, you can see you know, I've done some docking, right? And each one has RCS ports and RCS tanks. Now, uh, uh, the next thing I'm going to be docking onto this is a lander module. Basically one where if I, if I need to, uh, if something goes wrong, I need to recover my Kerbin knots. I want to be able to get off the station and land on Kerbin safely. So we're going to go ahead and dock that to the, uh, to the, uh, to the vehicle now. The most important part at this point is the payload. You really have to pay attention to what your payload is, because if you do it wrong, you won't be able to dock without breaking stuff. It's quite unfortunate. Now, for the new person, I'm not going to, you know, go too simplistic. We're really going to put a lot on here, okay? So we're going to start with a Mark 1, 2 command pod and a... I'm using this kind of docking port because I have Ferrum Aerospace installed. You can see this little editor analysis here. It's because I just you know, have realistic aerodynamics. I recommend it if you do want to try it, but... Aside from some extra nose cones and fins I'm putting on this, it's all the same idea, right? So we're going to put a control wheel on here. Go to propulsion. Now, this part's going to be, uh designed for uh, lots of leeway. I mean, lots of leeway. I'm going to slap on some FLT-800 tanks on top of this X-32 tank. And we're going to place on... Uh, I guess we can put on LVT-45 engines because I've got thrust vectoring. You could put nuclear engines on if you really were so inclined. Uh, I prefer to have the higher thrust. We're going to put reaction wheels on top of this. And for my sake, put some nose cones on top of those. And we're going to grab fuel lines and feed the uh, center of fuel to the outer ones. Notice I'm on four times symmetry because uh, really four times symmetry is just beautiful in my opinion. Now this is a lander so we need landing legs. L2 landing strut. Right and you can right click them and look at them deployed make sure they're low enough so these will this will keep me landed nicely. Next I believe actually for uh, lighting in the dark sake we're going to throw some lights on this. Now, I apologize, you know, for this lander design for anyone who really has a uh, slower computer. I mean, I just recently upgraded my computer to one that could handle this at 60 FPS. So I understand the whole need to limit parts, so really remove any parts that are not necessary to you. Like, if you don't mind taking your time turning, remove the reaction wheels. If you don't mind docking in the dark, remove the lights, you know. Uh, so what else? Oh, yes, of course we're going to need RCS. Go over to the Propulsions tab. Now, I have something called the RCS Build Aid. It's a plug-in that uh, is really unbelievably handy like I, I can't even I can't even be begin to describe how handy this is for knowing if your RCS ports are centered or not but for argument's sake I'm actually going to leave that off uh, norm like this is not going to be fun without it but I'm going to leave it off because you know not everyone has it not everyone's into installing plugins I, I respect that right slap some RCS tanks on there right and no real no real words on that now you're going to want the RCS thruster blocks and these are excellent for translation uh, because they've got four directions of you know power. Make sure to place it somewhere where uh, it's close to the center of mass, but it's not going to do this stupid rotating thing like this. You know, just try and line it up as best you can. I mean, your reaction wheel should cover for any any uh, odd torque. Still on four times symmetry. You don't need much. You actually don't want much. Too much, and you could smash into your station. It's hard to hard to do. So you can see, you know, you've. Uh, Got your payload, right? And oh, we're gonna need power. See? Always double check. Always look at your f stuff first before launching it. I just like the whole uh, solar panel and battery combination because the engines do provide a lot of power. Solar panels are good for if you're not burning your engines for a while. And this is pretty good. Now, if you're particular on Delta V, you can look at the mass, do the calculations. I'm not so particular. I, I trust in the fact that this has a lot more than I need. Next, we're gonna place on a docking port. Not docking port, sorry. We have one. Uh, decoupler, the Rockamax brand adapter, decoupler, not adapter, 
Propulsion wise, I like to do my final stage as a skipper engine. It's not very efficient, but we don't need much. This will be just for circularization. Uh, for for safety's sake, I believe we will place on a uh, separate troner for them. Set to fire when the sucker decouples, which we'll go after. No, we want these things to fire when it decouples off the rest of it. So when you decouple, we need you to fire. Okay, that's how it needs to go. So you go, and then you go at the same time as you all go. Now, we're going to go to structural, put on a Curbidine ADTP23. This uh, is for the new uh, 2.23.5 uh, parts, which are very large parts. I mean, that's huge. I place on small tank. With the Curbidine Advanced Engine now, it's got a beautiful ISP in vacuum, but it's very heavy. That's the uh, downfall, is the mass and size. I mean, you don't want to be hauling this into space. This is excellent for an upper stage part. Don't use it for liftoff. I know it's beautiful. Don't use it for liftoff. It's terrible ISP at sea level. Worse than a nuclear engine, I believe. Actually, wait, let's compare that. Just real quick. 280 at sea level. 220 at sea level. Okay, so yeah, the, the atomic motors are worse for the specific impulse at sea level. But, uh, all things considered, this works. We're going to put on a big tank with a cl engine cluster. These are much better at sea level, but not nearly as good in vacuum. Uh, initially, I believe the design was to have uh, some that had an inverse ISP, so basically it would be uh, high ISP at sea level. We got two times symmetry for these: high ISP at sea level and low ISP in vacuum. And there are rockets in real life that are like this. They're actually calibrated for use in an atmosphere for liftoff stages, and then you've got uh, vacuum stages that are designed for better use in vacuum. Now, I am rambling a lot here, but if you can stay with me. Now, this is the launch stage. You can build it however you want. If you want to do a uh, 2.5 meter asparagus stage, you're welcome to do so. I just recommend the new parts because they are super awesome. Like, it's, it's, they're just really cool. Now, uh, these engines here, you can actually stack fuel on top of them if you want more fuel in them. If you have that extra bit of thrust to weight ratio, it's good to add extra fuel. And, uh, for my sake, slap some nose cones on top. I'm waiting for them to come out with 3.5, uh, 3.75 meter nose cones, so I can use these like boosters. <laughs> I still think that'd be kind of cool. And uh, I'm gonna slap a few fins on here at four times symmetry. There we go. Check my center of lift. That's not gonna work out very well, now is it? No, it's not. Oh my, something's not right here. Uh, what's not right? What's going on? What? What's the matter? The U. Yes, it is. These are causing a lot of grief. Now, unfortunately, yeah, sometimes this happens, and what this means is that my rocket's basically going to go butt over tea kettle. Is I guess is the polite way of saying it. But if I use structural fins, it works better. Yay! Okay, good. That's what I want. Is for that to happen. Okay, so uh, next we're going to place on fuel lines feeding from these externals into the main engine, and why are you not going? Because symmetry's being a jerk. That's better, that's what we want. One strut. Just like so. Four struts. Just like so, because decouplers are weak. They leave them weak on purpose, except for the 3.75 meters on those are pretty strong. Okay. I believe we're good. Oh, no, one more thing. Separatrons. These are your best friends when it comes to decoupling old stages. Place them on the nose cones. Make sure they're on each one. What will happen is you want these separatrons to fire when you're decoupling. This will shear them away quite nicely. You won't have any chance of them crashing into your ship. Or you have less of a chance, I should say. So these all fired first. Then these decouple. And then these decouple. Then those decouple. Then those decouple. There we go. And this is sort of the setup that I would recommend. Just look at that. It's beautiful. Just beautiful. Okay, I'm just thinking last minute. I kind of want to figure out my thrust and stuff, but that would take too long. So, we'll just launch this. I'll leave this untitled. Because I don't plan on saving it. I never actually save ships unless I need to. But typically I just build a new one each time. Now, I've got my FAR flight systems. I actually don't need them because I'm not using a space plane. 
I also have a docking assistant or docking alignment indicator. It brings up a window that a uh, it, it shows you uh, orientation relative to the docking port. Shows you your uh, current position relative to the docking port, your x uh, and z axes in relativity, as well as shows you closing velocity and actual distance. It's quite handy, but I'm not going to use it. Same thing for sake of argument. We're just going to go ahead and launch this. We're not worrying about timing so much because we're not trying to do a quick rendezvous thing. We're just going to go res, you know, as easy as possible. It's going to launch, and you can see there's actually a lot of kick there. I uh, might need to put struts lower down. We're going at just over 2 G's of acceleration, which is quite nice, uh, if you ask me. Hopefully it's not too loud for you. I've got my volume on my headset turned down, and this thing is torquing nicely south. Or, sorry, north. Uh-oh. 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 That's no good. Why are you pulling south? It always seems to do this for me. I don't know. Fair amount of space. I blame that. No, stop that. Can't wait for the uh, actual vanilla drag model to be updated. They're working on it, but uh, for now, I'm sticking with Fire Space because, you know, realism. Those can be detached, you see? Beautifully sheared away. This can be put up back up to the full throttle. We need just over 1G. Uh, 1.5 Gs of acceleration to 2 Gs are ideal. Now, in your case, you would do your standard uh, launch, you know, to 10 kilometers, do the gravity turn. Me, with Fire Mars Base, I do it, I do it uh, a little bit sooner. By a little bit sooner, I mean almost immediately. Also, you'll notice I'm way surpassing the 200 meter a second boundary. And that's... This is, uh, mimics a real, real world rocket launch. They actually want to get out of the atmosphere as quick as possible without hitting terminal velocity, which is actually uh, calculated based on your drag and stuff. It's a lot of mathematics. So you can see we've uh, entered what would be technically the uh, the orbital altitude out of the atmosphere in earlier versions of KSP. I think it's like point or pre point sixteen or so. They uh, basically would cut the atmosphere off at thirty six kilometers. Uh, like they would sharply cut it off. There'd be atmosphere to no atmosphere. Uh, later updates they found this to be rather irritating for most people, so they just smoothed out the transition from atmosphere to no atmosphere. Specific impulse is still relatively low, but I think we might have had a little too much on our launch stage, which is always good. You always want that extra power. I mean, if you can go overkill, go overkill. It's the Kerbal way, of course. Okay, fire the next engine. Now look at that beautiful engine. This is a lot quieter. It's got a lot better uh, specific impulse up here. And it's got actually a fair amount of kick. I mean, 2500, I believe. Yeah, that's uh, one more mega newton than a mainsail. There's my station. We're going to go up to about 240. Press X to kill the acceleration. Now we're up. We are already in, in vacuum. We're up past 70 kilometers, so we're in vacuum. And, uh, for argument's sake, okay, uh, say, hmm, say your ascent was a bit less efficient. Oh no, you ran out of fuel on that stage. You had to use this stage a little. Use the jet to push that away. That's okay, because we've still got a lot of fuel to go. I'm going to go ahead and make our maneuver node. I'm uh, not sure if you know how to do maneuver nodes. That's. I'm going to assume that you understand maneuver nodes because if you don't, you really should be working on that one first before docking. Turn your SAS off to conserve electrical charge because you can just turn and drift your rotation over and people are showing up on Skype. If they try and call me on Skype, I'm going to get really frustrated because I really don't like it when they do that when I'm recording. They should know by now that I tend to record. They should ask first before I can call. Try and live as best you can with your maneuver node. Really, maneuver nodes are simple. Uh, okay, so we're going to do a little bit of a burn for a moment here. 36 seconds. Just for the game to calibrate the time it takes for you to go, based on the engine you're using. So at 18 seconds, we're going to start the burn. So when node in time, or node in T equals 18 seconds. Sorry, node in T minus 18 seconds, I should say. If you're very particular like me, you start a second early in order to allow time for the uh, throttling up. And see, it takes about two seconds to throttle up. And you're just going to go ahead and burn on your maneuver, no maneuver node. Don't bother chasing it all over the place when it starts to veer off. If it veers off with like, you know, 100 meters a second left to go, yeah, go ahead and move just a little. 
But if you're down to like the last 10 meters a second, don't bother chasing it all over the nav ball to get it to zero. It's not that particular. Something like this, you've got like a 2 meter a second leeway. Oh, we're in a bit of an eclipse. Well, that's cool. Like, see, yeah, we're like 1.1 meters a second off. Doesn't matter. Game's telling us we're accurate enough, and that indeed we are. 241 by 245 is a nice starting orbit. Now, we're going to have a quick look at this. Here's our station. Here's us. What we want to do is we want to be basically actually right where we are. We would want to uh, make, a, make a node. Actually, set you as a target first. And then we're going to go ahead and make a node to accelerate until we touch the, touch the orbit. Now, you can see it's a bit off. What you can do is you can drag the circle here and you can move it and find out. So we'd want to actually accelerate in about a minute. And this would leave us 16 kilometers away. Now, we don't want to be that far away because our inclinations are different. We'd actually be below them. So... What we want to do is we want to, if you want to create a node, I don't use nodes for uh, inclination changes because I find them too iffy, but if you really want to, you can try and do that. Let's see how much delta V it'll take and at what time and where you're going to need to burn. So we'll just go ahead and do that. No changes like this, you don't have to be too perfect because just another general area to get it down to zero degrees. It's always good. I'm going to go ahead and warp over there do this burn. And I mean, you can see, we, I mean, if you're efficient enough, you can do these missions with ease. Now, I might do another uh, episode where I show how to uh, quickly rendezvous. Because if there is actually a much faster way of doing this, this is just the, the way that gives you a lot more thinking time. But there is a way to basically rendezvous right off the launch pad and uh, meet up with it as soon, before you even go orbital. Basically, when your circularization burn will be the burn you use to cancel your relative velocity. Oops. Ah, uh, we're about 0.1 of a degree off. That's okay. We'll just move over gently. That's the problem with uh, the skipper is you got a little too much power. If you're impatient like myself, problems can occur. Ever so gently, set it to zero and wait for it to try and jump on you. Might go to the nan. Yep, can we get nan? Nan is uh, not a number, or not a divisible number. This basically means you're uh, so close to zero, the game doesn't even want to bother calculating it. It's just such a small number. Now, we want because we're in a short orbit, we're going to be going faster. We want to be behind the target. That said, if we're above our target, we want to be ahead of it, so we can uh, compensate for our acceleration when we speed up, and this Oberth effect and whatnot. Because we're in such an orbital difference, it's actually quite easy. You don't need to wait very long in order to match up. If we were like just a little bit lower, it would take a long time to catch up. I, I do recommend you know using very heavily different orbits as well as build your stations above 160 kilometers. Because ooh, is this a perfect? Oh, what well, do you know? It's like a perfect encounter right there. Sometimes this happens. It's nice. Three kilometers. That's exactly what we want. Okay, so build your stations above 160 kilometers off of Kerbin, because especially for slower computers, you want uh, you want it above there because that's when the game stops rendering the ground completely. It goes to like a default rendering of uh, just a basic texture. When you're rendering the entire ground, that's when it, you know things get nasty and even small stations can lag. So basically, what you want is above 160 kilometers is uh, when you get your best efficiency with your stations. You can build larger stations without lag. Okay, so that said, I'm going to we're just, because because we've been using this engine, we can rely on the estimated burn time. Uh, 33 seconds. So we're, we want to round that to a number that's divisible by two. So we're going to say 32 seconds. So at 16 seconds, we want to start the burn. And 17, we're going to start the engines, throttle up, and we're going to burn down this delta V. If you're really ca uh, interested in calculating delta V, there are pro uh, plugins you can get that can do that for you. It'll tell you how much delta V each stage has, and uh, MechJeb is great for information. I know people say MechJeb's cheating, I don't want to get too much into this because there's so many different views on it. 
MechJub is excellent for information. It will give you any bit of information your vehicle could need, as well as the utilities panel carries a lot of different utilities for different applications. Yes, there are autopilots, for, so if you're new to the game, you want to watch how something is done, excellent, do it. You know, use an autopilot because, oh my goodness, the beast, there's it down to 0.6 kilometer separation. See, even slight variations in meters a second can really cause big differences. Okay, but yes, uh, back to the mech job thing. It's not cheating unless you want it to be cheating. I mean, if you don't like it, don't use it. If you like it, use it. I When I first started, I used it to watch how things were done. And I still use it. Uh, once I get it fixed, I'll be using it again to see information like Delta V, time left in the stage, uh, time to apoapse, time to semi-major axis, things that the game doesn't actually tell you. This will tell you as well. It's not going to give you like cheating information like, you know, do this to get this for free, or it's not going to give you infinite fuel or anything. But it's going to just help you out with information you don't, that you don't know otherwise, like uh, altitude above sea level. I can tell you that. Uh, as well as altitude above the land, the, ac the true altitude. Yeah, lots of things, but moving on, we're going to actually carefully, now, quick save here. This is probably a good place to quick save, if you're in a situation like this. What's going to happen is we're going to catch up to our uh, station. We're going we're gonna to end about half a kilometer away from it, so we'll go within rendering distance, which is 2.35 kilometers. And you see it'll switch to target mode once we get close enough. Now, before we actually get to the closest approach, like right about there, we'll look over towards the target, it's about 11 kilometers away. We're going to rotate, rotate, uh, rotate to the retrograde marker. This is actually retrograde in rel uh, relation to our target, not re uh, relative to your orbit. So the yellow marker is what we want. The purple markers show where your target uh, prograde and retrograde are. So if you want to burn at your target, you burn those. But we're going to kill our relative velocity as quickly as we can. Slow down to about 50 meters a second at this distance. Really depends on what you're comfortable with. I mean, you can go with as slow of an approach as you want. Also, I want to burn away from this so I can get it to push over towards that pink marker. Oh. Okay, kill the velocity. Let that jet away. That'll push itself away nicely. Oh, within rendering distance. Actually, okay, we just had a slight fr fl uh, frame rate lag. Wow, I cannot speak ever. Get a bit dry mouth here. Pretend right. So now we're headed straight for our target, basically. And we're just gonna coast along, quick save again. Now they did fix the thing where quick saving, or sorry. Oh, Jesus, no! See, this is why we quick save, this is why we quick save. Okay, that was close. They fixed the thing where warping caused things to jump all over the place due to data conversions and whatnot, but now we've pretty much gotten to our target. You could use this entire stage to get to your target. It's really not that hard. We can move over towards our target marker. We can turn SAS on and RCS on, and now we can start translating with the I, J, K, L, H, N keys. H, N is forward backwards. I, J, K, and L is translating, much like if you're on EVA. Now you can use your uh, nav ball to your advantage and line yourself up, but we're going to actually look backwards and we're going to zoom over to our station. You look at a docking port. Right click, set as target. Now, this pops up. I'm going to close it. Ah! Darn it. I can't close it. Okay, well, we're going to. Okay, I'm going to push you off to the side for now. We're going to ignore you. We're going to do this uh, as you would way back when. So you line up with your target. You're going to make sure your uh, retrograde marker or prograde marker is uh, lined up with it. You're going to accelerate towards. Uh, we're in a very heavy, cumbersome vehicle. It's not going to be a quick approach. You don't want it to be a quick approach. I mean, we're in like a, I'm assuming a 30 metric ton vehicle? 50 metric ton vehicle. You know, that cracking into your station at half a meter a second is still 25,000 newtons of impact. So. Why is that my target? Oh, wait. Open the shield. Control from here. Shows me that I'm headed right towards my target. Oh, wait, is that my target? Set as target. That's a better target. 
There we go. So we'll set that Clapatron as a target. Make sure we're still headed right for it. And there we go. We're just going to gently come in and uh, as you can see, there's a bit of a rotation uh, difference. Now this is why I like this sucker. See it shows the orange marker relative thing, but we're not using that. In this case, what we want is we want to just get close to it, right? And we're going to have to start eyeballing it. So we're going to say this would be roughly about there. If you, oh, if you like, you've got lights you can use. I think I've done goof, though. I probably should have used the high power lights. We're going to kill our... Oh, there we go, so we can start to see it. I'm going to really just get slow. Now, if you want to really know, the yellow uh, prograde circle it will actually push the uh, purple marker away, if you want to keep that in mind. So it's good for lining things up, because you can you know, push the purple marker in front if you believe you've got the right relative ori orientation. So you know, you can line things up quite nicely. Having too much RCS power can actually hinder you because it's it can make things a heck of a lot more challenging. So you can see we're relatively lined up. Now we want to do this slow because we won't be perfect. We're only human here. So you want to come in at like three point three meters a second if you're if you're new, maybe even less. Point yeah, point two meters a second. And when you get close enough, these docking ports will have they have magnets that will start to pull you. You want to turn RCS and SAS off at the same time, R and T. And the magnets will pull and we have docked. Now this can be done a lot quicker, but oh my, okay. I already messed up, you see. I forgot parachutes. But the station's all put together. The lights are on. The lights are beautiful. Turn the lights off. And there we go. Let the batteries charge, and we're off to build more parts. You can build mega stations if you want. Like I'm still running a clean FPS with this station. I mean, there's a habitation module, which is full. i got to send up a shuttle. I've got an extra two docking ports if I want to extend to my code. Create some sort of like elbow joints for this so I could add extra modules out here and extend it further than what the core allows. This is a tiny core. Actually, usually my cores are a lot bigger. Got power module, fuel tanker, so I can say I want to top up this fuel for a return to Kerbin. I can do so, keeping in mind to try and keep everything balanced because you don't want to have too much fuel and not enough oxidizer. With a station of this size, I don't recommend trying to rotate it. I, I mean, you know, if I quick save, I can show you what happens. You try and rotate, and all the reaction wheels start fighting each other, and you get wobble like no belief. See, even just trying to move or oh, yeah, see like that, starting starting to get severe wobble. Yeah, you can use uh, time warp sometimes to stabilize this because the positions on the docking ports reset whenever you time warp. Yeah, look at that. That's just horrendous. There we go. Use time warp to fix that. But yes, anyways, I hope this video has helped. Uh, someone at least. Thank you for watching. Been Shiznik Gaming. Feel free to check out my channel if you're so inclined. Subscribe to me. It's always great to know that I've helped someone. And honestly, I'll do lots of tutorial videos if requested because I I remember being new to this game and really. I love to help people. I mean, I never got help myself, so I had to learn it all myself, but if I can help someone, that's great, you know? Like, it's it's awesome, because I, I know it takes a long time to play this game. I've been playing this well over almost two years now. So, thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more.